Hello, welcome. I feel a little bit lonely here, if I'm honest. We have three visitors, we have no session chair, and if I check my watch, we should be starting now. Is that true? Is it a quarter past four? So I think we have to start. So for the guys who would really like to join, you can, could come a little bit forward. I mean, it's sort of a privatissimum at the moment. You know, it's just positive feedback for the presenter, you know? <laughs> Thank you very much for attending. I'm talking about Apache GSP Wiki. So the first question coming into mind is, what is Apache GSP Wiki? It's an open source Wiki engine. I think you might have guessed that. And it's built around Java enterprise components such as Java 1.6, servlets, and GSP. As a funny side note, when I proposed this presentation for my Java local Java user group, the initial response was no. I asked them why, and they told me, come on, Ziggy, everything which contains GSP in its name must be bloody boring. So I'm still thankful that you're here. Let's start with a short history of Apache GSP Wiki. If you look at the timelines here, it has a long history. It was founded in 2001 by Janne Altkanen. It, it entered the Apache Incubator in 2008, and it graduated finally in the year 2013. I don't know, do you know Apache Incubator? So this is basically a thing where you launch a project and you should leave the incubator after one year. So Apache GSP Wiki holds the record for the longest lived incubator project at Apache. Cool. And the question now is, how do I fit into the picture here? I have an interest in knowledge management and information sharing tools. This is based primarily that I'm a contractor, freelancer, however you call it. And I have a couple of clients, a couple of projects. So for me, it's really a concern to gather all this knowledge, to categorize it, to file it, to search for it, to find it, and also to share it. I met Janne at the ApacheCon 2008 in Amsterdam. And over the years, I created a GSP Wiki distribution called Wiki on a Stick. The idea was to create a distribution which could be run from a USB stick, independent from the operating system. So you could get a USB stick, plug it into your MacBook, you could plug it into your Windows. Is there any Windows computer, laptop here? Yeah, a Windows laptop here. And it should run out of the box on the USB stick. I gave a quick presentation at the ApacheCon 2010, I think in Atlanta. And in the year 2012, something happened. After four years in the incubator, there was no mentor left for Apache GSP Wiki. And if you know the incubator, you know that's actually a knockout criteria. So I volunteered to become a GSP Wiki mentor in 2012, and I'm a lousy mentor, but they still graduated, so I'm quite happy about it. Coming back to the topic, knowledge management and information sharing. In the good old days, we had paper. We took paper notes. And you have to agree, paper notes are hard to update. They're hard to search. They are a little bit easier nowadays to share and to back up, assuming that you have a photocopy around. So, but they have an advantage. If you're quite honest about it, they have one big advantage. So if you scribble down your notes in your paper notebook, they will probably last for a few decades or centuries, assuming that you're using acid-free paper. To put that into some numbers, I think the oldest papyrus roll dates back to 2500 before Christ, Christ, yeah, before Christ BC. That makes approximately four and a half thousand years. And I think that most of our digital content now will be accidentally deleted in the next 50 years. So let's agree paper is a little bit outdated. It has a couple of advantages. It will outlive us, hopefully. But nowadays, we have other tools. Since I'm working on that field for many, many years, interested in trying out tools, I come up with a couple of tools you could use or already using. 
there are the plain old text files. If you are really fancy nowadays, you're using Markdown, you might have a Markdown editor. You search for your files through Spotlight or don't know what the Windows thing is called. They have a search like this, like Spotlight. It could be all you need. There's another tool which is quite interesting. I played around recently. It's called Notational Velocity. And the NV Old is basically a fork of the original project, which is quite nice, which also creates some sort of index and markdown files in the background. But it has issues with Dropbox synchronization. So those binary index getting messed up by Dropbox. Anyone using Evernote? Uh, I saw a couple of people here taking notes in Evernote. I never used it. I think to be really useful for me, I would have to go premium and pay those 40 bucks a year. The problem I have with Evernote is it's on a server, you know? It's a server I don't trust, and it's on a server which might go out of work if the company goes belly up. So I don't know how the Evernote users are handling this, but that's the reason why I stay clear from Evernote. Then we have my favorite. It's the SharePoint server. Why do I love SharePoint server? I worked for a couple of companies where they actually considered, or where actually the SharePoint server is most the best secured thing in their company. So I think in many companies using a SharePoint server, it's easier to nick the customer's credit card information and passwords than to get access to a SharePoint server. So this is basically my, my opinion about SharePoint Server. But we got another option out there. You might have guessed it. It's a wiki. But if you look into the wikis, you find out that picking one wiki is difficult. If you look at the site Wikimatrix, they basically list one than more, one than more than 100 wiki implementations out there. So if you just go out and say, I would like to pick a wiki, you land here, you look at the list of available wiki implementations, and then you make your choice based on the implementation language, based on the storage model for the wiki content, maybe based on the license, might be happy with GPL, might go with other license, and you might go along, as you say, mm, popularity. But as wiki matrix is quoting, the most popular wiki does not necessarily need to be the right wiki for your needs. So here goes MediaWiki. But this quote actually brings an interesting question. What are your needs regarding a wiki? I don't know it, but I can a little bit talk about my personal needs of having a wiki. So let's start with my list. What's really important for me from a wiki is different usage models. So when I start a new project for a new client, I'm setting up my personal wiki for this particular project and type into my stuff. Sooner or later, it might be possible that my personal wiki becomes a department wiki because people are saying, you know, that's really cool. You have all this information there. Is it possible to put it on some local server there? We have an old box. Are you able to run a wiki there? And my answer is yes, it's very easy. So for me, important, I have a personal usage and I can go up to department usage or can even use the hosted solution where I deploy GSP wiki on one of my servers. I have another interesting requirement. Sometimes I need to work offline. So I would like to use my wiki, but I'm offline. I might be offline because I'm sitting in a train go reading for a book and making notes in the wiki. I might be offline due to working in a highly secure data center where they say, well, you're in a highly secure data center. You have no internet connectivity out there. So you have no VPN. So you have no access to your SharePoint server. Here goes SharePoint server again. So what's really important for me as well is offline possibilities. Since I have a couple of wikis for each customer, one wiki, I need a way to cleanly separate my wiki pages. And the term for that is wiki spaces. I need wiki spaces. I need a wiki for that customer. I need a wiki for another customer. And I need a wiki for my personal needs. And I have to cleanly separate this. And what I really love is wikis using text files and file-based storage. In the perfect world, a wiki file, this is the stuff, the markup you write into, just becomes a just plain text file. And in the perfect world, this plain text file is stored on a file system. Why is that useful to me? I can write with Dropbox. 
So if I have my local wiki running on my local box, I can basically push my wiki changes over Dropbox to my other computers. So I can scribble some notes here on my laptop, and as soon as I have got internet again, it pushes my changes to my office computer and pushes the changes to my home computer without a server setup. Another advantage of textual content in the file system is that you can use a version control system. So regularly, once a month, I'm not sure about it, but I should do, I'm grabbing all the stuff and just push the thing into GitHub. So basically, I have a backup using GitHub of my Dropbox contents representing my wiki content. I know it sounds a little bit funny, but it's handy at times. Another, another thing is content migration. If you have a text file on a file system, you can write or come up with a simple script like I did last year. So I had the situation where my customer said, you know, you have this wiki content, we would like to have that, but we are using a different wiki. We are using Twiki. How difficult is it to migrate your local wiki to Twiki? And I said, it's easy. Just sit down, write a little org script, and convert this, the markup from GSP wiki to Twiki. So I think it's now time to have a visual run through for GSP wiki. When you attach the wiki using a browser, you see the normal just page, one wiki page. This is basically my collection of useful git commands. Another side note, my unofficial job title is Senile Software Engineer. And it has nothing to do with my age, but has, some, has something to do with my mental capacity of remembering stuff. So if I, use, if I work with Git, I have a couple of Git commands I use regularly, and you know the thing, it's command line. You would like, how do you revert the changes forcefully? You could Google, or you could basically check your personal wiki. If you look at the stuff, you see you have an auto-generated table of contents here. This is basically auto-generated by using the headings. You see some source code formatting, and apart from that, it's just a normal wiki page. If you click on the edit link here, you can open the edit view of a wiki page. So you have a text view, you can type in the stuff. That's basically GSP markup you type. What you have here is the toolbar. I hate to say it. It took me two years to find out that there is a JavaScript-based wiki editor hidden here. Because when I opened the page, it was always the toolbar with a plus sign. So I never expanded it. So it took me two years to find out that there is some help in actually typing all those markup stuff. What else? Sometimes you look at a wiki page and you're interested in the changes. What happened to the wiki page over the time? GSP wiki comes with a comprehensive support of versioning. So if I click on the info link above there, you see, okay, this is a page. I, I nicked the page from the Apache GSP wiki site. We have seven iterations here. We have here a list of incoming and outgoing links. So you see how well this particular page is connected with the rest of the wiki. And you see the version history. You see we have seven revisions here, we have the changes, and we have, if you're lucky, we have change notes. So if you click on one of the links, you can actually get a visual diff of the wiki changes. So if you are a form of wiki gardener, you can basically trace through the changes and say, okay, yeah, well, that's interesting. That was deleted, I have to re-edit again. Sometimes, you need to search to find a wiki page. So it's obvious that each and every wiki has some sort of search functionality in there. So what I was doing here, I was looking in the GSP wiki for the term plugin. And as you see, I got altogether 57 search results. You can page for them. But what's quite nice here is, it gives you a ranking, a relevance score of the results. And if you click on one of those links, it opens the corresponding wiki page, and it does highlighting of your search terms. You know the problem. You have a page, it's quite long, the search term is somewhere hidden, so the highlighting really helps you in finding your stuff again. What else do we have? Yeah, boring. We have a page index. 
So there are a couple of GSP wiki, they call it special pages. So they have pages which helps you administrating your wiki. And one of those special pages is the so-called page index. So you get your page index, you can click on the link and you land straight through to the corresponding wiki page. If you invest your knowledge into a wiki, you have to do, we call it wiki gardening. So you basically, if you're running your wiki in a development group, someone has to take care of, of the wiki. And one part of taking care is actually to find unused pages. What is an unused page in a wiki? It's a page which exists but there is no link to it. So if you don't know that the page exists, there is hardly any chance that you will ever find it. And this is basically part of wiki gardening. So do we have undefined pages, which are referenced, but are not there? Do we have unused pages, which are there, but they are not linked to the rest of the wiki? Also part of wiki gardening would be checking recent changes. So. If you would like to see the changes of the last 30 or 60 days, that's just one mouse click away, it opens you a wiki page called Recent Changes, and you can see what the committers have actually changed on, yeah, on their GSP wiki instance. Okay, we had a visual run through. I think it's now time to look into the internals of GSP wiki. When you look at GSP Wiki and its configuration, you will come across a few core abstractions. They are basically plugins, there are filters, and there are providers. A plugin is something simple. A plugin is something which is called when a page is rendered. So a good example would be the image plugin. So when you embed an image into your Wiki page, it's just an image. You might would like to add you know, a size of the image, you would like to add a caption. This is basically a thing the image plugin is doing. We have seen the recent changes plugin. That's also some, a functionality implemented in the wiki by using Java code, actually. We have filters. There is GSP wiki ships with a spam filter, and I call it smiley filter, which replaces you, gives you the little smileys, the nice ones. And you have providers. The providers are interesting. What a provider does, as its name implies, is it provides a certain functionality, such as you would like to search for pages or you would like to access pages. And this is implemented by terms of search providers or page providers. And these are basically swappable implementations. Let's have a look at a plugin. Do you remember the recent changes plugin? It was a wiki page. Okay, so how does the wiki page actually work? So what you see here is you see a description and you see the list of changes. So what I do now is, under the More button here, you can view the actual little wiki markup. So if you look at the wiki markup, you see something interesting. The first two paragraphs are just plain wiki markup text. So what you see in the, re in the recent changes page is markup. This markup here calls actually a current time plugin. So you can get the current time properly formatted for your time zone. And at the very bottom, it invokes the recent changes plugin to say, please give me all changes within the last 30 days. And you see that's quite, quite straightforward and powerful. So if you open the recent changes page, you have wiki page, you have wiki content there, you have your wiki markup there, which you can edit. So you can customize basically every page. And down there, there's an invocation of the plugin. And as you see from the recent changes plugin, it's an implementation class implementing a certain interface. So yet, I think that's quite a powerful mechanism to extend and enhance your wiki. Let's have a look at the providers in more details. There are search providers. They are basically tackling the task of, you have a search term and you would like the corresponding wiki pages. GSP wiki ships with two search providers. One is the, called the basic search provider, which basically does a rec exping through all those wiki files they have on the, on the file system. So that's easy and straightforward. And it also comes with a Lucene search provider. That means all your wiki context, uh, content is put into a Lucene index and you can use advanced 
Lucene queries on top of that. But in order to search for pages, you have to find all those pages. And that's actually the task of a page provider. The page provider is responsible for storing pages, fetching pages. It comes with the default distribution with a file system provider, which just stores the wiki page without versioning information. And as you might have guessed it, the versioning file provider gives you the same file storage, including versioning information. So that's something which you can basically change in the GSP wiki configuration. Regarding configuration, GSP wiki comes pre-configured out of the box. There is a file called GSP wiki properties, which contains the basic the default configuration, which can be overwritten in your wiki using a GSP wiki custom property. So that's quite a straightforward mechanism. Let's have a look at it. This is basically an, oops, there is something missing here. This is just a snippet from, my, from one of my wikis. A wiki needs a name. So the name of this particular wiki I'm setting up is called private. It's my private wiki sample. Of course, if you have a wiki, you need to know your base URL for creating all those links. So it's wired to localhost 9627. You need, an, you need to tell the attachment provider where to store attachments. So what is an attachment here? If you have a wiki page, you can add any number of attachments. So they are actually visible and stored in a separate file directory. And you can reference the attachment from your, using your wiki markup. So if you attach, let's say, images, a PNG file or a JPEG, that's part of an GSP wiki page attachment. And if you link to that, the image is inlined. So you can basically upload PDF documents, Word documents, whatever. You can upload images. And most of the images are automatically inlined if you, use, if you reference them. OK, we have the data directory where to store the data. It goes into data private. We define a temp directory for working information or for whatever. There's a little bit of standard configuration I'm using. We have those attachments, and attachments could be potentially dangerous if you run a public wiki. So what we exclude here is dangerous attachments, like I don't want to have a DLL, I don't want to have an EXA, I don't want to have a PHP script. So that's basically a part of a security con or aware configuration. I also limit the attachment size to four megabytes. Then I'm doing something very nice. Do you know the term wiki name? So it's possible to have a configuration like this. If you use a word which contains camel cases, the wiki assumes automatically that this is a wiki page. That's called a wiki name. And what you can do with those wiki name in camel cases, you can split the camel case using a space so you get a nicer page title. And this is basically the thing which I enable here. I say, you have a wiki name, if it's camel cased, then cool, then put a space in there to make it more readable. I'm using here a versioning file provider, I'm using a basic search provider, and the thing you don't see here is there is something called gspwiki.security. Let's have a look at security. Security roughly falls into two parts. One part is authentication, the second part is authorization. Regarding authentication, when you use GSP Wiki out of the box, it comes with a thing, I have to read it, Java Authentication and Authorization Service. It's a standard, it's a Java standard library. It's available everywhere. Hardly anyone is using it. So, and your user credentials are actually stored in XML file. So if you run your GSP Wiki out of the box, log in, a new entry for your username and password will be created in the file called userdatabase.xml. But that's a GSP wiki. It comes with GSP and servlets. So that's the point where you can say, OK, forget about all those out of the box authentication. I'm not really interested in that, because I would like to use container authentication. We have Tomcat here, or Jetty, or whatever. So we can use standard mechanism. 
like one user was, is using a Tomcat Gini Reel wired with his LDAP user database. That gives you basically department-wise a sort of single sign-on, even to the wiki. So you can at least use the same username and passwords across all the systems. Regarding authorization, I'm sticking here to, to those JAAS. What you can do when you are authenticated or not is defined in a file called GSP wiki policies. And when you look at the GSP wiki policy, you see basically four different roles with associated permissions. The first entry is the anonymous user. So you're just visiting the wiki, you're not logged in, you're not presenting a cookie, so the wiki just simply does not know who you are. Depending on the configuration, you might are forced to log in, or you just have read-only access. There is an asserted user. An asserted user is a user which logged on in the past and is presenting GSP wiki a GSP wiki cookie. So GSP wiki assumes this is my cookie, I know this user has authenticated, let's say two days ago, and I accept him. But an asserted user might have different uh, rights than an already logged in user. And you have, of course, an admin user. So we're basically through standard GSP wiki. I would like to return now to my personal needs for a wiki. What I need from a wiki, like most software, is a moron proof setup. So I think, or this is my understanding, if I download software, even open source software, I somehow think it should be able to get it running within 10 minutes. If I download so something and I don't get it running within 10 minutes, I'm a little bit frustrated. So for me, it's really a goal. You download the stuff and it's immediately working out of the box. Over the time, I was getting a new requirement the requirement I mentioned before, I need to have the possibility to run GSP wiki from an USB stick. That is a nice story behind it, actually two stories, but I'm only telling you now one. Um, in Vienna I worked on a very agile XP project, and you know one cornerstone of XP is pair programming. So, question for the audience, how do you ensure as project management that pair programming is used in your development group? I mean, you just say, we have to do pair programming. What do you do to enforce that? I'll give you a hint. They had a brilliant solution for that. And the brilliant solution consisted of having five computers for 10 developers. I mean, it works, but it was a nightmare. And to make things even worse, you paired with another guy every, every day or every second day, and every day you were assigned to one of those five computers. So on those five computers, there were no personalized software installation. There was no favorite file manager of yours. There was no favorite text editor. There was nothing. It was basically just a plain box. And Okay, there was an Eclipse installation there, but you know, all those familiar tools you're working daily that you're just missing. So we came up with a solution for that, and we're using portable apps. So every one of us had a USB stick with his configured and set up applications running on portable apps. Portable apps means you have your USB stick, you put it into your computer, then the portable app manager application starts, and from there you can launch applications and they are pre-configured or you configure them to your needs. So what you have is basically your whole software stack on a USB stick. And since this was a project for a customer, I need a wiki to make all those notes about how to log in into the system, how to build it, how to deploy it, how to test it, how to understand this and that. So I needed to run the GSP wiki from a USB stick. And again, wiki spaces. I need a way to separate my wiki pages. And in order to do that, I came up with my wiki on a stick or portable GSP wiki distribution. And it really runs from a USB stick, yeah? That's really nice. Let's have a look at it. Focus for me is a ready to use GSP wiki installation. So if you download the stuff, my expectation is 
you unzip it or you untag it, gzip it, whatever, and it should be just running. In the background, it's a standard Tomcat is used, the current version. What I did actually is I tweaked Tomcat a little bit. I'm still working on that because I would like to have G I would like to have a GSP wiki having a minimal memory footprint because it's intended as application running all day long on, in the background. So if I could save some memory, that would be really helpful. And the wiki spaces stuff I implemented using web applications for each wiki. That means I did some sort of war file surgery. So the GSP wiki stuff, the libraries of GSP wiki, I moved actually to the Tomcat class, class loader. So it's shared Tomcat library. And the GSP and configuration stuff lives in a skinny war file, if you like. This has one important advantage. For each of your wikis, you can use a different configuration regarding GSP wiki policies and properties and users. So all of these wikis are basically independent from each other. What else? Portable GSP wiki ships with the usual Svelte scripts. I mean, it doesn't come as a surprise. Um, who of you is a Java developer? Okay, no Java developers here. I'm a Java developer. Okay, cool, another Java developer. So what happens frequently is, oh, your Tomcat or Java application of your choice you're just developing on is, it hangs, yeah, you have to kill it. And then you look at the process list and you have those 10 Java applications there and you think, I, I kill, I, it's that one, I kill it. And it was your GSP wiki. This is something I hate. That was my motivation basically to implement native launchers for Windows and Mac OS just to make sure that my Java process list is a little bit shorter. Uh, coming back to the Morum proof setup, I basically pre-configured two types of wiki. We had that in the beginning. We, I mentioned something like I have my, would like to have my personal wiki and I would like to have my department more public wiki and yeah, I mean, you have to configure a little bit, but my idea was, okay, I have my portable GSP wiki, let's ship two wiki configurations out of the box. And it's up to you to clone it and to modify it. So when we look at the private one, which probably should be called personal wiki, that would be a better match, that's a blueprint for a decentralized personal wiki. So that's, that's something you start up, if you work with this wiki, it writes its data to the file system, if this file system is wired with Dropbox or SugarSync, it synchronizes the changes. Since it's intended to be run by a single user, there is no login required. So when you hit the page, you can actually edit it. And I'm using just the basic search provider and no page versioning. This decision has something to do with Dropbox. So if you inject changes from behind actually using Dropbox, the Lucene search provider wouldn't pick up the changes. So to play safe, basic search provider, no versioning, that works over Dropbox. The public wiki, it's also misnamed. Actually, it should be called department because the main intention is to set up a department wiki based on this configuration where you say, wow, if you are not logged in, you just have read-only access. So everyone can actually read the wiki, but only logged in users and registered users can edit it. I set up two accounts. We have one admin user and we have a normal user, whatever this is for you. Since it's a department wiki, it's intended to run on a box on, yeah, in your department. That means all wiki changes are actually done over the web browser through the GSP wiki. Because of this, I can use the versioning file provider and I can use a Lucene search index for accessing the pages. Let's have a quick look at the directory layout. So what you have here is the usual launchers. You have a batch file, you have a shell script. You have a native launcher for Windows. You have a native launcher for Mac OS. And your wiki spaces or the web applications are located here. So you have this private and the public thing. And since it's a blueprint, it's very easy to copy the stuff. I just copy it over, update the GSP wiki custom properties, which is embedded in webint classes to your needs because your data might point to a different location. 
And what I have is basically add a link to a start page of the wiki. So if I'm running multiple wikis, I have a start page, which gives me links to my individual wiki spaces. And this is the way how it looks out of the box. So you start it one way or the other using shell script or native launchers. Yes, uh, it's listening on port 9627, and it gives you quick access to your private and your public wiki blueprint. Um, since this is one of my pet projects, you know the problem with pet projects. They're never finished, yeah? There's always one or more things to do. So what do I have on my list of things I need to do? The native macOS launcher only currently works for Apple JDK 1.6. So it does not work now with Oracle JDK 1.7, 1.8. This has something to do with that the Java installation directories and look or uh, uh, yeah, has changed from Apple to Oracle. So there are new tools out there which enables me to create native launchers for the Oracle JDK, but it's quite hard to, it's quite hard to use them. One thing I would like to clean up, the user credentials, those user database.xml is currently stored in the web inf directory of your web app representing your wiki. And so if you would redeploy that, deploy a new WAR file, you would actually use your user accounts. So that's not a good thing. That should be cleanly separated. Say, here's my folder with configuration data, here's my folder with my wiki content, and here is my folder with the WAR file containing the GSP pages. What I also found out is pre-compiling GSPs is a little bit slow. It's actually rather very slow, if I'm honest. So if you start GSP wiki, the portable one, yeah, it has to compile all those GSP pages, and it's actually quite slow, and I'm unhappy about it. It has something to do with my slimmed down Tomcat configuration. I only have a couple of worker threads assigned to it. I limited the available heap space for Tomcat to have my small memory footprint. So I think the best would be just to pre-compile all GSP wikis. So when you deploy the stuff, you get a set of pre-compiled GSP pages, which also has another advantage. I don't know how yeah, how good you know a GSP? A GSP page is a sort of markup. In order to process a GSP page, you need a Java compiler. And if you need a Java compiler, you need the standard Java development kit, JDK. If you happens on your laptop that you only have a Java runtime environment, compiling of GSP pages would not work. So that's the reason, because of speed and ease of use, I would like to create a package of pre-compiled GSPs. A few personal tips and tricks. I use the image plugin basically to size my images correctly. I'm a Mac user. As a Mac user, it's quite easy. You have a web page and you press Apple P and you can print it or export it to PDF. So with a little bit of tweaking of images, I'm able to do most of my paperwork for reports using GSP Wiki. So I told you about it on my, I had a gig in South Africa years ago doing some performance testing. So all those informations I needed to know and all the reports actually went into GSP Wiki. And when my customer was asking me, okay, can you send me a report from the last test run? It was all in GSP Wiki. I customized a little bit the images for the right size and they could export it as PDF document and email it. Because what I tried to do in my professional life is not to use, how is it called? Microsoft Word. That's just a nightmare for me. Another thing, if you write lengthy wiki documents, I tend to use my favorite text editor. Because all those browser things, ah, come on, that's crap, yeah. If you really have to do some complicated table markup and pretty print a table and the page, then using a text editor is much better. And GSP wiki has a feature I just simply love. It does not touch your markup. So if you have your pretty formatted table and pretty formatted stuff, you paste it in. And it's, yeah, it's just stored and kept in the way it is. As the opposite, there is Twiki. It's a Perl-based Wiki, which reformats my Wiki markup. 
which drives me insane yeah, if you have a big table and everything is scrambled up and unusable. That's the reason why I dislike Wiki a lot. If you would like to play with Portable GSP Wiki, um, I have a playground on GitHub for that. And you can also download it from my Apache website. So if you download it, give it a try, unpack it. Yeah, and if you like it, give me feedback. And if you don't like it, please do it as well, yeah? Um, during the preparation of the slides, one colleague asked me if I could present yeah, his custom extension to GSP Wiki. And while I was looking for his stuff, I had an interesting idea. The interesting idea is, can GSP Wiki actually use this integration platform? I mean, it sounds odd, yeah? I mean, it's a wiki, yeah? It's not an integration platform, it's, it's a wiki. But if you look at it closer, it comes as a servlet or WAR file, so you could deploy it in any servlet container. So that's something which you place somewhere and people have access to it. It has user management, so you know your users and you have roles and permissions. It's open source and business friendly, so if you would like to do something really fancy, you have to source code. It displays, well, yeah, it displays structured text and images. Okay, that doesn't come as a surprise, actually. But here's the thing, it's extensible. And you can write, or you write the plugins, extensions, filters, providers, whatever you like to have, you can write in Java. Assuming that you are a Java developer, and would like to do it. So in a way, that opens an interesting thing. What my colleague did was to implement a UML model viewer within GSP Wiki. So what he does, he had those, has it called rational rows thingy. You know, this very expensive thing which is plainly broken and you need a license to access the UML diagrams. So what he did is, he was using a daily export of his UML model. He was exporting the stuff in the file system exactly in the, uh, in the way GSP Wiki was expecting pages and images. And he was basically generating all those GSP Wiki markup. And his daily export consists of 9,500 images and altogether 20,000 generated GSP Wiki pages. And this is just dumped into the file system. So every developer or even management could connect to this GSP Wiki and search for the UML diagrams and structure. I mean, if you think about it, there's nothing behind it, yeah? You have a wiki which has, which has text files with the wiki markup and the file system, and it can reference images, a sort of attachment. So you can really do interesting things with that. And that was basically my idea. So what he was doing, he was using or misusing, whatever you like it, he was using GSP Wiki as a sort of integration platform to integrate his UML diagrams into a wiki so everybody could look at them and search for them and they're updated daily, so they're up to date. Here's another thing, so if you drill down, you get that view. So hoping that you are not asleep at the moment, which things you could take home. I'm not following the slides here. So there are many tools out there for knowledge management and information sharing. So Wiki is basically just one way of achieving this. So it's basically up to you to decide what is the best tool for your needs. And to be quite honest, Wiki is a commodity. Yeah? You have 100 Wikis out there. Uh, well, if I would know my way around through uh, Apache HTTPD and MySQL and PHP, I would probably set up MediaWiki. But I'm a Java developer. so. For a Java-based job, it's more natural to look into, uh, into Java-based wikis. So if you do that, if you say, I would like to go for a wiki, I would like to go for a Java-based wiki for whatever reasons you have, I would say GSP Wiki is a good fit for you. So you can run your personal wiki, you can install it on your laptop, you can install it on a USB stick, you can install it on a company server and just run the stuff. And yeah, I'm using portable GSP Wiki now for, I think, five years. So I'm collecting my stuff into the Wiki. I'm formatting it. I'm pushing it. I have it on the GitHub. I have it on my local box. I have it on the server somewhere. 
they are all interconnected somehow. But that gives really that gives me an advantage yeah, in remembering things after a while, like the GitHub or like the Git commands in the beginning. Yeah, and if you really would like to do fancy, it's open source, it's Java, it's extendable, so feel free. Which brings us to, well, basically the last slide for this presentation, questions and answers. Do you have any questions? Yeah, we have one question. Okay, so the question was how is versioning implemented within GSP Wiki? Assuming that you're using this versioning file provider, it does a very simple thing. Each revision of a wiki page you edit is stored separately and numbered. And a wiki page actually consists of a text file containing the markup and the property files. So let's say in the example in the beginning we had a wiki page with seven revisions. With the versioning page provider it would be seven wiki pages and seven property files. And those diff tool in between actually knows how to read the things and how they're ordered and can give you a visual diff of that. So it's very straightforward. I think in the beginning there was actually a version control integration. They kicked it out. I mean, I don't want to say it was, do you know RCS? Lucky you. <laughs> okay. So there are things in there that were implemented but kicked out. The problem is when you use a version control system directly, getting new stuff is easy. Adding and pushing new stuff is easy as well, but the problem comes in when you get into conflicts and have to merge them. So if you just get new stuff out of the blue, that's fine, yeah? If you add new stuff, you can easily edit and push it or commit it, whatever your version control system is. But the problem starts is when you got conflicts, Git is unhappy and you have to merge or you have to resolve the conflict manually. And this is actually the point where the abstraction breaks, yeah? It's not something like, okay, that works, it yeah, just works. You have situations where you need manual intervention. And here, that's a leaky abstraction, yeah? So what, are, what would I supposed to implement if I have a GitHub page provider in terms of conflicts? What I'm supposed to do apart from, oops, I have a problem, please help me. Any other question? Okay, then, thank you for being here, and it was a pleasure. <laughs>